Hi everybody, thanks for joining today. Um, my name is Miss Tabitha and I am at the Gail Borden Public Library. I'm so excited to bring you another um, episode of Baking for Kids. Um, and today we are gonna be making some fruit pizza, so that will be very exciting. Um, fruit pizza is a super simple thing that you can um, create and bake. Um, in the summertime, I think it's a really great thing to do on 4th of July because you can make it red, white, and blue. Um, but you, really, it's good anytime. Um, so basically, the simple ingredients for fruit pizza, you have a layer of cookie um, at the bottom. I've always done sugar cookies, but you can do any type of cookie that you want, really, um, that you think will taste good with some fresh fruit. Um, I've never experimented with cookie uh, um, chocolate chip cookies, but I'm sure that probably will taste good. Um, so the baseline, like I said, is going to be our um, sugar cookie crust. And then on the middle, we have a cream cheese frosting. And then the topping is any type of fruit that you want. So go ahead and gather all the supplies listed in the event description. Um, and I'll bring you through what you're going to need. So thanks for joining again today. Um, my name is Miss Tabitha, and I'm bringing to you Baking for Kids. Um, be sure to check out any of the other things we have going on. Um, during the month of May, we've got, we're taking a break from some of our regular weekly programs, um, but we do have another Baking for Kids in May. And then um, obviously, summer reading is up, almost upon us. So summer reading this year is gonna start on May 1st. So if you've already registered, go ahead and put it in the chat. I'd love to congratulate you on registering already. Um, and if you are excited about registering, um, you can already pre-register for that program right now. So you can go to gilborden.beanstack.com um, or you can go to gilborden.info and search for the summer reading page, um, which is gilborden.info slash uh, read 2021. So that's read 2021. Um, so if you want to sign up for summer reading, you can pre-register now and we are going to have so much fun um, getting prizes this summer, reading. There's so many activities inside Beanstack. Um, and you, I'm sure you will also have seen that you received a um, paper log in the mail with your newsletter. So if you are an avid follower of our newsletter, I'm sure you saw it in there and you can go ahead and start using that as soon as you want. Um, so very exciting. We're so excited for summer reading to begin. Um, it's something that we love doing each year um, and it's fun to see all the kids coming to the library to pick up their prizes so be sure to check that out and of course all of our programs during the summer okay so let's go ahead and get started making our fruit pizza so here are the ingredients you're going to need so the first thing you're going to need is flour we're going to need one and a half cups of flour so go ahead and get your flour down we're going to need some baking powder it's different than baking soda so make sure you get baking powder and not baking soda so baking powder and then you're also going to get some salt i have mine in all baggies today because i brought it home from my kitchen obviously you can tell i'm not in my kitchen today so um, i've got it in baggies um, some of it is pre-measured but some of it some of it is not um, and then what you're going to need is a stick of butter you will need some brown sugar and you'll need one egg, um, you'll need some vanilla extract and almond extract. If you don't have almond extract, that's okay. You can um, just put a little bit more vanilla extract in there. Um, it just changes the flavor a little bit. Um, but if you don't like almond or if you're allergic to peanuts or any nuts, um, you don't have to add that. And then for the cream cheese frosting, you're going to need eight ounces of low-fat cream cheese. You can also use the... Um, I can never say what that says, but you can also use this cheese. Um, it's got a little bit less fat content, so if you want to use it, I find that it's really smooth. Um, it tastes pretty similar to cream cheese, so you could use that for your fruit pizza. Um, we're going to be adding sugar to it, so it's going to taste good either way. Um, so I use that just because it's easier to whip. Um, and then you're going to want some honey. doesn't matter what kind, or you can use maple syrup. Um, or you can use one cup of powdered sugar. Then you're also going to want your vanilla again, some more salt, and then we're going to go to the toppings, which is any type of fresh fruit that you would like. Um, I'm going to be using strawberries today and some blueberries as well. So um, go ahead and have those ready. Okay, so if you have a mixer at home, you can use your mixer 
Um, I don't have a, my mixer here with me today, so I'm just going to be using my spatula and a bowl. Um, but if you have a mixer, it's going to go a lot easier for your dough. Um, so we're going to start with the cookie crust ingredients. So we're going to start with our dry ingredients. But first, I'm going to have you start your oven. You're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And you're going to get out your 9 by 13 baking sheet. Um, you can also use a 12 inch round pizza pan if you want to make it look like a pizza. And you can spray it with some cookie or with some cooking spray. Um, okay, so then uh, make sure you wash your hands. Obviously, that's, a, that's always something good to do. Um, and we are going to start putting our dry ingredients together. So you'll need a, a small, medium bowl for this one. You won't use your larger one, you'll use your small one. So we're going to grab our flour and we're going to put one and a half cups of flour inside our bowl. So I'm going to grab my one cup and I'm going to measure that into my smaller bowl. It's a little hard to do in a packet, so bear with me. Okay, so I've got my one cup here and I'm going to just wipe off the excess into my baggie, just like that. So I've got one cup, I'm going to put it right into my bowl here, and then I'm going to get a half a cup. So one and a half cups of our flour is going to go into our smaller bowl first. I used the bag to level that out that time. So this is a half cup. So now I have one and a half cups of flour in my bowl. Okay, so the next ingredient, don't put your flour away yet. We're going to use that when we roll out the dough. Um, we will need a rolling pin, um, so make sure you keep the flour close by. So I've got my one and a half cups of flour in here, and then I'm going to use one teaspoon of baking powder. So teaspoon is going to be your smaller spoon, and it's going to be the, um, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of bright. Uh, it's going to say TSP. So TSP, teaspoon is going to not have the B in it, so it's just going to be TSP, so my smaller one. And if you've baked with me before, you know that I love the container of the baking powder because it gives you a little lip that you can wipe your teaspoon off on, um, and it just makes it really convenient for um, measuring this out. So you're going to go ahead and take a heaping spoon, and then you're going to use your, you're going to rotate your um, container there, and then pull out your teaspoon, just like that. So super level. And you're gonna put that with your flour. You can put this away. We won't be using this anymore. The next thing you're gonna do is grab your salt. So you're gonna use one fourth teaspoon. So again, our smaller spoons. One fourth teaspoon of salt. So it's really small. You're going to use the one fourth teaspoon of salt. Oops, you can get it out of this bag easy. And I just kind of shake it um, to make sure it's level. And you're going to dump it right in with your baking powder and your flour. Okay, and then that is all of the dry ingredients that we're going to add to this. So you can take your spatula and just stir all of these dry ingredients together. All of these colors are white, so we can't really tell if all of them have been mixed together completely. So we're just going to give it maybe 30 seconds of moving the flour and the mixture around. And then one thing to do that you want to make sure you do is kind of scoop the bottom and then lay it on top so you can get anything that's maybe um, just stuck to the bottom or just um, Hang it out on the bottom. Okay, then we're gonna put that aside. We don't need that until um, we are done with our wet ingredients. So if you're gonna use a mixer, now is the time to put it in your mixing bowl or your mixer bowl. Um, I don't have my mixer today, so I'm just gonna use a large bowl. And I'm going to add together my sugar and my butter. So I left this butter out because I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to have a mixer today, so um, this is going to be really soft for me. 
If you have a mixer, the instructions say that you're going to put it in your large mixing bowl and put your sugar and your butter together. Put it on a medium speed for about two minutes until it's sort of light and fluffy. Um, and then you will start to add some of the other ingredients. Because we don't have a mixer, I'm just going to use my hand and I'll show you what to do. So it looks like that for now. If you haven't um, if you haven't put your butter out, go ahead and pop it in the microwave for like 10 seconds or so just to get it a little bit soft so it's not um, it's just so cold from being in the fridge. Um, so then when you have your butter, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit so you can kind of see more of what I'm doing. So I just kind of push and smush it down. So it's sort of like playing with Play-Doh except instead of playing with your hand, you're going to play with your spatula. So. Your spatula is just going to kind of um, smush it around. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so your spatula is just going to smush all of that around. And you're going to start taking the sugar and pushing it in with your butter. <coughs> all right. So. You can see that after some work, I've kind of combined some of that together. Um, you, um, let's see. Yeah, you um, don't have to, uh, you know, you'll just keep doing this until, until we're totally um, kind of mixing it together. So, um, and I can't see my comments for some reason right now. So if you've commented, I'm really sorry, I can't see my comments. Let's see if I can. Sorry about that. Just one pause. Well, hopefully nobody will have any questions. Um, hopefully I'll be able to answer everything, but I can't see the, the comments. So I'll just keep going and hopefully I'll be able to explain everything. Um, okay, so. I'm just going to keep smushing this all together until it looks like the baking, the um, brown sugar and the butter are combined. I like to, if you notice what I'm doing, um, spread my spatula around and then squish it. So, sort of like, I don't know how to describe it. Um, you bring your spatula around the side of the bowl and then squish it on top of each itself, on top of the sugar mixture. So then you want to make sure that there's no pockets of butter. So if you see that right there, you can sort of see that there's a little bit more butter right here. Um, so I want to make sure that that color is all gone, that the butter is all combined really well into a smooth mixture. Okay, so that is pretty good. That's pretty smooth. So that's what that looks like. Um, and then what we're going to do is put our egg in, and then we're also going to put our vanilla and the almond extract. So go ahead and take your egg and crack it, and then we're going to put it inside. So because I'm not at home, <laughs> I totally forgot to grab an egg out of the fridge when I left this morning. So pretend that I'm putting an egg in here. Here we go. And, yeah, so you're going to put your egg inside, and then you're going to measure your ingredients for the almond and the vanilla mixture. So make sure you put your egg inside. You're going to mix it all around with your egg, and it's going to start to become more loose when you have your egg inside. And then we're going to put your almond and your vanilla extract in. So again, we're going to go with the one teaspoon. So grab your teaspoon and make sure you have your vanilla. And you're just going to put one teaspoon of vanilla. And then you're going to do one half of a teaspoon of almond. So it's exactly half almond. So half, one half teaspoon of almond extract. And if you notice, the color of almond extract is clear. And vanilla extract is um, a darker brown color. It's kind of cool to look at. 
that, that difference. Um, okay, so now that that's all in there, you're going to mix that around. And with your egg, it's going to be a little bit more soft. Mine, I'm sorry, I forgot that this morning. <laughs> okay, so I've got my sugar, my vanilla, and my almond extract, and my butter, and my egg. We're going to pretend is in there. And that's all combined. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to slowly add the flour and the dry ingredients. So you're going to take that dry ingredients there and you're just going to put about half of it in your bowl. If you've got your stand mixer, you are um, going to put the whole, uh, or I'm sorry, you're going to also put half of it and then just let it um, mix together. My dough is going to end up being a little bit flaky because I don't have enough liquid inside. So if you are doing it properly, it should look really soft. And actually, I might just end up doing, no, I'll need to. Yeah, so I'm going to look, it's going to look a little bit more flaky for mine. Sorry, I forgot that egg. <laughs> That's the, um, I guess, the reality of this show. We're all people. We're not professional cooks by any means. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my mixture pretty well or, uh, mixed together there. So now I'm gonna put the rest of my dry ingredients in this bowl. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna mix it all together. Again, if you're using a mixer, you can go at low speed and just let your mixer do the work. If you're like me, um, just sort of rotate your bowl like I'm doing and push your ingredients towards you. That's sort of what I find is to be the easiest. Okay. So your dough, because you have that egg in it, is gonna look a lot more um, smooth. Mine looks very dry because I don't have that egg. So um, yours is going to look very, very smooth and it should start to be combining together in a really nice color um, and it should look consistent in the color as well. Okay. You know what I might do? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So because mine doesn't have that egg, it's going to be hard to roll it out and show you guys. Um, but I'll kind of talk you through the process. Okay, so what you should have now is a dough that looks a little darker than this, that um, is smooth and like fits together really nice. Um, and you're going to start putting it on your pan. Or, I'm sorry, no, we're going to start rolling it out first. So go ahead and grab your flour, and you're going to cover your, your tabletop. You're going to move everything else around you away, and you're going to start covering your tabletop with some flour. So if you've baked bread with me before, if you've made sugar cookies with me before, you know that you're going to cover it generously with a large amount of ingredients. Or, I'm sorry, with a large amount of flour. So then you're going to dump your dough which like I said, will be much, much softer than mine and a lot more sticky. And you're gonna put it down on the tabletop, just like that. And when you make it into a little ball, um, put some more flour on your hand if the dough is sticking to your hands. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start just rolling it out. So I like to use a, pin, a rolling pin that's like this. Um, if you don't have a rolling pin like that, that's okay. Okay, so then you're gonna start rolling it out back and forth with your hands, and you're gonna start making it into a big rectangle shape that will fit inside whatever pan you're using. So I'm using a rectangle. So if you're using a, a pizza pan, you can do that as well. And you're just gonna start rolling it out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna transfer it to your baking um, dish. So because mine is so dry, it's not gonna pick up like your guys' as well. Um, so if you are, if you added your egg, um, you're going to pick it up off the counter and kind of roll it up. You can even use your rolling pin 
and kind of put half of it on your rolling pin and then lift it up. And then what you're gonna do is just place it inside of your tin. Obviously, it's not gonna fit totally well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it down and move it around with our hands. So you can put your rolling pin off to your side and you're gonna start pushing with your hands. You don't wanna go too, too hard. You just kind of want to, sort of like Play-Doh. If you're trying to cover this in Play-Doh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We don't wanna to push too hard because then we're gonna smush the Play-Doh. Um, but instead, you're just gonna kinda gently move it. And in the middle here is where you're gonna probably have the most amount of dough. So kind of make that middle and then go out. That's usually what I do. And again, I'm really sorry. I see that there's another comment. Um, I just wanna let you know, I can't see the comments for some reason. So if somebody else um, can answer her, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I will try to answer at the end of the program. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to pull this all the way around. There we go. Okay, so it should look similar to this. Yours will be a darker color, but this is what it should look like. So if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of a rim around the side of it, so it's sort of like pizza and it has a little bit of a crust. I don't, um, so you can do either option. So once it's all sort of um, spread out around the the tin, make sure there's no spots that are like just really, really thin, and then just pull those down. And you're gonna pop this in the oven for 15 minutes. So go ahead and put it in the oven for 15 minutes. Um, I will tell you, last night I made my own, and it took about 12 minutes in my oven, so make sure you're keeping an eye on it. Maybe set the timer for 10 minutes, and then take a look. Once you start getting a little bit brown on the crust, just like that. Um, you can pull it out. And to let you know, I used a light colored baking tin yesterday. So if you have a baking pan today that is dark color, you're gonna want less time because it'll bake faster on that. So um, maybe set a timer for eight minutes, see how it's going and then check it again. Okay, so put that in the oven. Set a timer for about eight minutes and then you're gonna go ahead and check that. Now, you're gonna clear your area of your flour, put it off to the side. We won't need it again, so you can put your flour away if you'd like. You can wash your hands off a little bit. Let me grab a paper towel. So you can wash your hands off of the stuff and then wash your space and move that all around. And the next thing we're gonna do is take our small bowl that we had our dry ingredients in and we're going to mix together our wet ingredients while the other stuff bakes in the oven. So you're gonna take your packet of cream cheese or any other type of low fat cheese option. Um, you could also do a full fat either way. And you're just gonna pull all of that off of there So you're gonna use all that cheese and put it right into your small mixing bowl. Um, then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your um, honey and you're gonna put two tablespoons, two to three tablespoons. I like it a little bit more sweet, so I'm gonna put three tablespoons in. Um, so I'm gonna use the, the measuring um, spoon that says TBS to put in my honey and we'll just squeeze it into here. So I've got one tablespoon ready to go. Here we are. Okay, and then I've got two tablespoons. And I use my spatula to get the honey out because honey is so sticky. So I'll show you how I did that again. I've got my spatula here. I'm just gonna use the side of it and go into one side and then just push it. Try not to go too hard with your push, otherwise you might um, push it out too far and get your spatula on somebody. <laughs> um, so then I'm gonna put one more in there. 
So I've got three tablespoons. Um, I'm going to use that again in a little bit, so don't get rid of it totally. Okay. All right. So that is my honey. I've got my cream cheese in there, my honey in there, and then now we're going to do the vanilla extract and a little bit of salt. So when it says a pinch of salt, literally it's like you're pinching somebody. Just do a pinch. Put that on top, and that's it. So a pinch of salt. And then we're going to take some of our vanilla, and we're going to do one teaspoon. So again, the smaller one of vanilla. So a teaspoon, which is TSP. We're going to do one teaspoon. All right. And that's it. So that's all of our wet ingredients. So now what we're going to do, if you want, you could put this in your mixer with mixing stand. Sorry, I should have told you that earlier. Otherwise, you can just slowly mix this all together. It sounds kind of gross when you do it, <laughs> like somebody's eating in your ear. Um, but you'll just kind of mix it all together with your spatula. If you notice any areas of the cream cheese, if you're using cream cheese straight out of the fridge, um, or if you're using a harder cream cheese, um, just kind of push it with your spatula like this. Squish it down. I'll try to show you up close. So squish it and kind of pull it across the bottom, just like that, of the bowl. And then I just rotate that and do that same pulling motion while I rotate. It smells really, really good. I hope it smells good for you guys. <laughs> All right. Okay, and I will say another version of this, you could have put maple syrup in it, you could have done one cup of um, powdered sugar. There's lots of different variations of this. Okay, so now that is pretty good combined, but I'm gonna do it a little bit more since I still see some clumps in here. I just want it to be a little bit more, so I'm gonna do it quickly around here but make sure you're controlled so nothing flies out of your bowl. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. A yummy, cheesy, tasty topping. <laughs> okay, so now, um, I know your guys haven't, hasn't been enough time to pull it out of the oven yet, but maybe go give it a check um, to make sure it's doing okay. Mine I did last night, so um, I knew I wouldn't have an oven, so I wanted to make sure it was ready. Um, so I've already got mine. If you're gonna pull it out of the oven in just a little bit, make sure that it is cool to the touch. Um, Grown-ups maybe help out with that part of it uh, because you don't want your cream cheese to just melt everywhere. So make sure it's cool to the touch and then you're gonna put your cream cheese topping on there. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then, or actually, let's get the, let's get the fruit prepared first. Give you guys a little bit more time um, so that way you can follow along with me. So um, grab a cutting board, and if your grown-up allows you to use a knife, go ahead and grab a knife as well. Um, if your grown-up does not allow you to use a knife, you can help your grown-up um, by either um, picking the best fruit from the bowl and having your grown-up do it or using the assistance of your grown-up to help cut these. So I'm gonna cut some strawberries and I'm gonna slice them together so they look like this. I want them to be uh, maybe one half of an inch thick. And then I also have blueberries. I probably won't cut most of those, but if you wanted to, you could cut those as well. The reason I'm not gonna cut them is because um, I don't want anybody's fingers to slip while they're holding the knife. Um, but you, and they're, they're pretty small. So if you eat them all together, that's okay. <laughs> so then what you're gonna do is you're going to slice off the top of your strawberry, put that off to the side, and you're gonna cut it. So a couple cutting tips. I always hold my knife just like this with my finger on top here. Um, and then I hold this sort of like that. Um, make sure you never hold a knife towards somebody. Make sure you always hold a knife away from yourself. And when you're cutting something, make sure your fingers are sort of like a claw. So when you're holding it, 
your fingertips are away from where the knife is. So if I accidentally were to cut, I'm not gonna get my fingertips. So you see that? So I'm gonna cut and I won't get my fingertips, okay? So make sure you do all those things and also have your grown up with you if you're ever using a knife, um, unless they've given you permission to use it alone. So I'm gonna cut that just straight down and you can saw it if you'd like, or you can just cut it straight down. So that's about it. I'm gonna cut a couple more just to show you while you get the rest of yours cut. You can obviously cut while I'm talking and showing you instructions if you know how to cut strawberries already. So see how my hands are um, sort of like a claw? My fingertips are away, but I'm still holding the strawberry. And I'll do one more. So you're gonna cut the top of it off. And for the tops, I usually cut where there's any green parts. Um, so just so that, you know, if it's a little bit less pink, you know that's not gonna taste as good. It's gonna be a little bit more sour. And when you're cutting anything that's round, you wanna make sure you have a good hold on it, but again, using your claw technique, um, because you don't wanna accidentally um, nick yourself with the knife. Okay, so be very careful with your knife whenever you use it. Now we're gonna to get to putting on the toppings. So I'm gonna take my spatula, and if yours is not ready yet, that's okay. You can just watch this part and see what I do. It's kind of the easiest part. You don't really need instructions on how to do it. You're just going to be putting this, spreading it all across the top of our cookie here. So I put it in one lump in the middle, and then make sure I get all of it out of there. Don't wanna um, waste a drop. So use your spatula to sort of get it out. And then you're gonna use your spatula to spread this all around. So spread it just like that. And if you have empty spots on your first initial spread, you can just refill it. And if you have a cake decorator, um, you can also use that. So if you have one of those like metal spreaders, you can absolutely use that. I'm using a spatula today because I didn't bring that with me here. So then get it off of your spatula like I just did and continue to spread across your cookie top. If there's um, large sections of it by the edge, you can sort of do what I just did where you're gonna pull it with your spatula. And then if there's any empty spots, go ahead and drop that, um, the remaining stuff on your spatula in those spots. Okay, this is pretty good coverage. And I'll show you what this looks like from up close. It's kind of a sticky part. Um, what you can also do if there's like a spot that you see there's, you know, a, a big empty spot, you can take it from your finger or from the spatula and then just kind of like pat it on there and then leave it. Um, it'll be, I don't know, sort of like an ice cream cone shape, but at least you have some there and you can sort of fix it when you put on the fruit. Okay. So there's that. I'll show you what this looks like close up. It's just covered completely. And it's not perfect. You can see I got some on the side of my baking tin right here. Okay. So now you're going to start decorating this however you want. So if you want to, you can put your strawberries, you know, every other. Um, you can do them up and down, whatever pattern you want to make. If you accidentally drop one, that's okay too. And if you don't want a pattern, you don't have to have a pattern. Um, it's kind of fun to make it freeform too. So if you don't want to have a pattern like this, that's totally fine. Uh, like I said, when uh, it's kind of fun to decorate these for 4th of July, you can do um, an American flag or um, really any, any country's flag you can put on here. So um, it's 
kind of a fun activity. Okay, and I'm losing my pattern, so I might just end up placing them for time's sake. So, got lots of strawberries. And you do feel like you're making a pizza at this point because you're definitely putting on the toppings like you would a pizza. It's all up to you, um, especially if it's a personal pizza. You can make the decisions on what you want it to look like, how much you want it to have, where you want them. All of that is totally up to you, so you do not have to make it look like mine at all. Okay. So I've got my strawberries on there and your time might be getting close to the time to take it out of the oven so go ahead and take a look at it if it's time um, you'll know because the edges will start to get a little bit more brown and what you're going to do is you're going to put it on a um, just a wire rack or you can put it on like a um, oven top um, if you've got a gas oven um, if you don't then you can put it on a um, hot pan too or a hot pad um, to just let it cool. Uh, make sure you don't put anything on it until it's totally cooled. So now I'm gonna start doing my blueberries. And for these, I'm just gonna start by sort of dropping them on the plate. And figuring out how many you want. So if your family does not like blueberries or strawberries, you can do any type of fruit on these that you want. You do not have to follow what I'm doing. You could even do mangoes, that would taste really good, or pineapple, all of that would be really yummy. Okay, so that is your fruit pizza. Um, because this is all ready to go, you and it's all dry or cold, you can start slicing it up and eat it as soon as you want, since this is, when you put on the toppings, it's gonna be um, cold enough for you to eat. So um, thanks for joining. I hope you liked that part. Um, and now I'm gonna share a quick story with all of you. Let me move this table out of the way. And I'm really sorry that I can't see the comments. Um, I don't know what's going on there. So hopefully I covered everything for you. And if I didn't, I apologize about that. Um, the link to the blog that I found this recipe is in the Communico entry or event calendar entry. So if you have any questions about like, you're gonna, you know, how hot you're gonna put your oven or how many minutes you put it in, um, you can look at that blog post. Um, but again, I'll just repeat it. It's gonna go in the oven for 350. You're gonna check around eight minutes, um, depending on your oven, so. Okay, thanks for bearing with me as I didn't have an egg today. I apologize for that. Um, but now I'm going to read a story. I hope you guys are ready to read. Um, so this is called Mr. Crumb's Potato Predicament. And we are going to learn about a potato predicament. So let's see. George Crumb loved to cook. He he frosted, flambéed, boiled and braised, poached and pureed. He made sher sherbets and souffles, stews and succotashes, ragouts and galoshes. That's a lot of fancy food. And George loved cooking so much, his house ballooned with food. He opened a restaurant called Crumb's Place and hired a waitress with cheeks as round as plums named Gladys. George cooked to his heart's content and his customers devoured its, his concoctions. Many considered him to be the best cook in the country. That would be quite an honor to be called the best cook in the country. That is, until one day when a man, when a particular looking patron, he wore a purple polka dotted uh, carvat and a sunflower on his lapel Filbert P. Horsefeathers is the name he trumpeted, and the P stands for punctilious. And I have a hankering for a heaping helping of potatoes. Just potatoes, said Gladys. Just potatoes, said Filbert. That is particular. 
So with a switch of his apron and a tape and a tap to his chef's hat, George got to work. He cut the potatoes into wedges, boiled them, fried them in a dollop of lard, and sprinkled them with salt. Lard is similar to um, butter, except it's a lot more rich flavor. Then Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert uh, Punctilious Horse Feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork and peered at it from all sides. <laughs> Too thick, he said, pursing his lips and pushing his plate away. Well, Huckleberry's biscuits, said Gladys. The customer at table five is sending his plate back. Picky, 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 muttered George, who had never had a customer refuse his cooking. So with another swish of his apron and a tap of his chef hat, chef's hat, George prepared a plate full of thinner wedges and Gladys set them down in front of Filbert punctilious, punctilious horse feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork, peered at it and said, look, and, and took a tiny, teeny nibble, still too thick and bland as burlap, he said, rolling his eyes and pushing his plate away. Well, flying flapjacks, Gladys said. The customer at table five is sending his plate back again. Fussy, 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 muttered George, who proceeded to cook a plate full of even thinner wedges, this time with a splash of salt. When Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert Punctilious Horse Feathers, Filbert speared the wedge with his fork, peered at it, nibbled it, then took a bean-sized bite. Still too thick, still bland, and undercooked, he said, puffing out his cheek and pushing his plate away. Gladys let out a tut-tut and a tisk-tisk and a snort, and then picked up the plate and returned to George's kitchen a third time. What do you think George is going to say? Let's see. This cannot be, said George. Everyone loves my spuds. They're scrumptious. They are succulent. They are sublime. Not according to finicky persnickety filbert punctilious horse feathers, said Gladys. Now George was known to his customers to be a bit of a prankster, and his daily menu was evidence of his lively sense of humor. To draw a laugh or two, George often listed menu items that were, shall we say, somewhat unusual. Stewed skunk in sassafras sauce, pickled possum pancakes, grilled ground groundhog, and crotte. Not sure how to say that French word. So in the spirit of playfulness, George took one more potato and carefully balanced it on his chopping block. With his finest, sharpest knife, he slowly shaved it into the thinnest, slimmest, and trimmest of slices. He heated a la ladle full of lard in his pan and fried the slices until they were so crispy they crackled and then he showered them with salt. Let's see how Mr. Horse Feathers fancies these spuds, said George with a wink. Does anybody know what kind of potatoes these might be? What might they be called? With a wisp of a smile, Gladys set the plate down in front of Filbert Pun Punctilious Horse Feathers. What do you think? Do you think he's gonna like it? Filbert turned the plate this way, then that way. He tried spearing one of the potato slices, but it splintered. So Filbert put down his fork, and with his fingers, he stacked the slices until they teetered. Then he cracked one, and then he snapped one. After that, he did, after that, did Filbert punctilious horse feathers pop one into his mouth. <gasps> Perfection, he proclaimed. And before you could say prickly, prickly porcupine pie, Filbert had munched, crunched, and gobbled up every last morsel. I guess the joke's on you, said Gladys, when she returned the empty plate to George. Fire up that frying pan, one, frying, frying pan one more time. I want to try those for myself. So with a swish of his apron and a tap to his chef's hat, George did exactly that. 
Why, my taste buds are ta tap dancing, explained Gladys after sampling George's new creation. Delectable and delicious, declared George after he too ate a few. I'll call them crumbs, crisp, crispies, and put a plateful on every table. Word spread, and before long, people from all over the country and far, far beyond were clamoring for George's new concoction, which became known as potato chips. And here is George. This is a true story. I don't know if it's totally true, but I, I'm pretty sure parts of it are true. Um, so this is George who invented the potato chip. Pretty cool. And then this is George's restaurant. And it says 1825 is when George was born in New York. And he died in 1914. So that's pretty cool. And this is what the potatoes came in. Isn't that neat? All right, so that was called Mr. Crumb's Potato Predicament. Um, thank you all for joining today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, version of Baking for Kids. Um, and I hope you will enjoy your yummy pizza, your fruit pizza. Um, I hope you enjoy sharing this with your family and having it for dessert tonight. All right, well, I will see you all. Actually, I won't see you all next week or next month because Miss Jen is going to be leading Baking for Kids next month. So you'll see her on Facebook Live. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed the time.